There's a story that's often told in Buddhist traditions of a hermit who was also an artist and liked to paint on the walls of his cave. And he was painting what was something of a masterpiece, a wonderful tiger, a life-size tiger, very realistic down to the minutest detail. And just as he was putting the finishing touches on the eyes, he stepped back and gazed at his work and then ran, terrified, out of the cave. He was scared that the tiger was going to attack him. And we might think, well, that's kind of ridiculous. But how often are we frightened by the fabrications of our own mind? How often do we respond with emotions of anger or fear? simply because of a story that we've told ourselves or an image that we've conjured up within our own minds. Thoughts color the perceptions of an unenlightened mind. Our emotions, our biases, our assumptions all distort what we perceive. Every time we become angry over an imagined loss or slight, every time we experience fear over something that hasn't even happened yet, that worry or dread about what if, in a way, it's like we are creating our own tigers and saddening ourselves, angering ourselves causing fear or stress within our own minds. The stories that we create are not a reflection of the objective reality. They are the stories that we create. This mind is incredibly creative, and sometimes it's creative in very positive and useful ways, and sometimes its creativity is corrupted by defilement. Some people think that if they just sit longer, do longer meditation, sit still, force the mind into submission, that they'll become enlightened. But I don't believe that's the case. I don't believe that just forcing ourselves to sit still will lead to the wisdom and the letting go and the profound realization that is awakening. Sometimes people think that if they just behave ethically and are impeccable with the precepts and develop loving kindness, that that will free the mind from the causes of suffering. And although virtue is truly important and kindness is essential in our lives and in our in our world, these are wonderful qualities. It is not the equivalent of awakening. One lesson that I've learned from nearly four decades of Buddhist practice is that inner transformation does not come about merely through creating a better identity, unraveling our personal idiosyncrasies, improving our communication, or gaining any rarefied spiritual experience. Liberation goes far beyond any self-improvement project. Powerful liberating understandings occur by experiencing the knots, not clinging, not self, not mine, not fabricated, not identifying, not grasping, non-attachment. We're not cultivating a grander and more polished identity. By letting go of harmful and habitual thought patterns, we open ourselves to the possibility of a transformative experience of not self, of not clinging. 